Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you choose to watch this video. Um, I, as you can see, I have gone through and I have looked at and graded your observation discussion boards from the first four chapters of And Then There Were None. And instead of going through and commenting on what everybody said individually, uh, just because I don't have enough time to do that, um, I wanted to kind of create a little video to go through and make some comments on people's observations because you guys said some pretty interesting things um, about our our lovely cast of characters and where you think things are headed and and that kind of thing so um some of the um global uh, feedback and, and point of conversation was the confusion of the first four chapters and going, um, so if you said it was boring and it didn't keep your interest and you were confused about who's who, what's what, and all that kind of thing. And I, I think that that's important to recognize because I think about when you meet people for the first time or when you're invited to a situation that you're you're unfamiliar with. I think we're supposed to have this impending feeling of confusion because just like the characters don't know each other, we don't know them. So I think we're supposed to get to know them as they get to know each other on the island. Um, I think it also kind of mirrors that chaos that is soon to be impending upon our, our characters as well. Um, I think, I don't know who it was, um, it may have been Alex who said that, um, what he noticed, uh, a number of people, um, particularly noticed that each of these characters are different people. They're, they're, um, they come from a variety of, of walks of life. Some are professionals, some are, um, lower class, upper class, middle class, wealthy class, but they all have. A similar invitation they all have a, a kind of similar um, background um, in that they are all um, implicated in some way into um, causing the, the death of an, another individual um, and they all have um, as I think Chris said um, a past. Um, and I think that that's important to to look at because while these characters are all different, they have this kind of unifying, mm, they're unified in some way. And I think that that's important because I think that that's what part of what Agatha Christie's point is, is, you know, social class, uh, none of that stuff means anything. We're all humans and we all um, are, are um, likely to uh, kind of have that darker side, so to speak. Um, but I, 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 I can't remember, I think it's Erin who said, uh, the thing that bugged her the most is that, you know, they all get this invitation and you guys mentioned that it was, you know, they don't know who it's from, they don't know why they're going and why go, why accept this invitation? I wouldn't do it. And I think that that's a kind of like the, the uh, we've watched enough murder mystery shows and, and things like that to know something's fishy and something's not right with this invitation, uh, which I think is, is, is interesting because I, I for one don't think that, that, that I would go, um, but to kind of drive, drive it home, why go? Well, they're all motivated in some sort of capacity to give in to that curiosity of what's going on at Soldier Island because our, our, our narrator um, gives us some kind of insight into, well, it's a kind of a big deal to know what's going on at Soldier Island. Is it owned by a millionaire? Is it owned by an actress? So they, they give in to that kind of, of, I mean, it's kind of an ego boost to be invited to some place like this and get the skinny on this very mysterious um, place. But if you look at someone like Lombard, who 
is skint for cash and needs the money, he's going to go because he's driven by um, that financial um, element, as is Vera, um, as is Emily Brent. She has no money to go out and have this kind of paid for vacation. So, of course, she's going to take advantage of that. Um, you have um, someone like Wargrave who doesn't need the money. He's lured out there to kind of reconnect with, with his friend Constance. And uh, same with uh, General MacArthur. He's lured there to kind of go and, and talk to some people um, from his past. So um, they all have different motivations. They all have different reasons um, for being there. And once they kind of come together collectively, I think they start to question, well, this isn't, you know, um, what I, I thought it would be. So, um, that's that. And I, I think Javante said that, uh, one of the things that he noticed and I think, um, is really interesting. Um, he said two things. There are all sorts of red flags, um, red flags abound guys, um, in this story. And we can see that because we're privileged to information that, um, the other characters are not. But the one thing that, um, I think that, um, Javante said that I thought was really interesting and a lot of you kind of, and I'm going to tie it into a number of things that a lot of you guys said is this kind of change of identity. Um, that Bloor um, makes, and um, I think Alex said something about it too, in, in that um, it doesn't make sense why he changes his identity and, and all that kind of thing. But I think um, each of these characters have this persona or, or this outward presence that they want to present to society. Um, and I think for Macy said that all of these characters seem like they're running from something. There's something in their past that that they, they want to get away from. And I, I think that that kind of change in identity or that, that pr presentation of who they are outwardly may not always reflect who they are on, on the inside. And I think it's up to us to figure out who they are. Who are these people? Um, both as, you know, individuals, but also deep down, what are their, their, uh, what are they trying to hide? Because they're all trying to hide something. And I, I think that it's interesting too, that, um, Roger was mentioning the um, kind of uh, foreshadow of the guy on the train, the drunk guy, and the, the kind of Christian values of the final days, the last judgment, and that kind of thing. And what do you think of when you think of your final days after you've been, uh, you kind of have to atone or recount um, the, the past in some kind of regard. And I think that whoever is behind this kind of bringing them together, it's kind of a, a psyop in a way. It's a psychological torture mechanism to put these people on this isolated island to force them to be um, isolated, not only from society, but isolated and among themselves to kind of go through and recount um, their, their past actions. Um, it was Danielle who said that uh, she thought Vera was an interesting kind of gal and that um, she hopes that we find out more about Hugo and Vera. And yes, yes, keep an eye on um, Hugo and Vera because that story really unfolds for us. And I, I, I want you to pay attention to what is said as well as what is not said and how um, Vera sees um, her past and... and um, the kind of, of, of desire for um, the life that Hugo can give versus the reality of taking care of, of children. Um, a number of you mentioned Emily Brent and uh, said that she was a very unlikable character and uh, because she has a sense of superiority. Um, I was one of you, I think, uh, who, who, who said it? Um, Sarah said that Emily is the most guilty. Um, and a number of you said that she's the only one that doesn't really fess up to anything. And the only person she really confides in 
is Vera. And I want you guys to pay attention to what Emily Brent really represents because she is this religious figure and we do have these Christian undertones. Um, but she's one of those people I think that will talk the talk and and point the finger like at someone like Lombard, right? Um, and not look at her, take stock at her own uh, behavior and how she doesn't really abide by the um, values that she preaches. Um, the I, I do want to mention that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I can't remember who it was, um, who said something about the indictments and um, how it was kind of interesting that they're all um, charged with this murder or the implication of, of causing the death of, of somebody. And I think that that's interesting because we do have um, all of these people tied together and it kind of begs the question, um, I think Evan said something about these these guys are, are hiding in plain sight. Like you never know who is who or what is what or how, um, who a person really is. But um, this kind of indictment really, um, the excuses and the justifications um, that they have and and especially Vera who mentions I was exonerated in a court of law right at the at the inquest and all of these guys really have some sort of excuse or or the law right is on their side um, versus the on the side of, of the victims they have some sort of justification for why they did what they did and therefore go unpunished. So just because you are exonerated or um, you know find some sort of, of loophole um, or someone flat out um, kind of hides, like in the case of Dr. Armstrong, um, they were able to cover up the fact that he botched um, Mary Cleese's operation because he was drunk. Um, just because you're exonerated in a court of law, does that still mean that you are not responsible? Does that still mean that you are not guilty? Does that still mean that um, you shouldn't be um, punished in some way? So keep that idea of, of responsibility and guilt um, in, in the back of your mind. A lot of you guys are suspicious um, of Emily. A lot of you guys are suspicious of Bloor, which I think is interesting. Um, because he is the one guy who lies about um, who he is and what he's doing there up until, you know, he's caught and he has to admit who he is. Um, and I think um, he said, uh, I think maybe Hannah said that, that uh, Lombard is the guy that she's got her eye on. And I think that's interesting too, because he is, as we know so far, um, the most sly um, the most, uh, he's got the gun, right? Um, and he is the one that you would most e expect, um, to do those kinds of things. And plus he's the one who's, who's guilty of killing the most people because he leaves 21 people, um, to starve as a matter of self-preservation, which he, he, he doesn't say it, you know, proud way, yes, I'm guilty of it. He just says it in a matter of fact um, kind of way. So um, whose judgment can we trust and whose word can we trust? Um, and then I think Hannah also said something about um, Isaac Morris. And I think that um, we don't get to know too much about Isaac Morris in the next coming chapters. Um, but he is a guy to keep in the back of your mind because we will see him again and he is this kind of unwitting accomplice um, that we find out more about um what's to come i really hope that you guys are enjoying um the book oh no um mm, yeah i'll come back to that yes um what's to come uh, pay attention to both the actions and the thoughts of the characters what they say to each other what they say to other characters that they don't say to um another Right. And how they kind of flip flop back and forth and kind of circle around these various different alliances. And we are going to have more questions, questions, questions than than we have answers. So um, 
keep looking for the answers to those questions um, as well. Um, keep in mind that um, in your, especially with your, you're going to be doing a couple more um, discussion boards. Keep in mind that you're specific and um, what you what you say prove that you have read and avoid summarizing the plot don't just tell me what happens in the first four chapters I've read this book a number of times I could probably tell you back and forth what happens and the people um, who are posting in the discussion boards um, you want to assume that they have read uh, the book as well so avoid that kind of plot summary be specific and um, purposeful in the the things that you say in the discussion board don't just give me fluff um, respond to at least two classmates uh, if your response more great um, keep in mind the title of the novel is italicized and I do want to mention um, because I didn't mention it in in the thing um, Deja mentioned something about the um, Ten Little Soldier Boys and the creepiness of the poem. Yes, it is very creepy. It's morbid. It's odd. Um, you have this poem that's meant for children, but is about death. Um, so the the reason that I'm bringing up the the Soldier Boy poem is because it really is a foreshadowing element for what is to come, and it really provides a framework and a structure. It unifies all of the characters, but also separates them. We'll talk about that um, a little bit later. So. Um, the other reason I wanted to mention the Ten Little Soldier Boy poem and Soldier Island um, is because that's uh, important. It's not Indian. They're not, we're not on Indian Island. We're not looking at Indian figurines. It's not a poem about Ten Little Indians. Um, it is Soldier Island. And I, no I noticed a number of people on um, your quizzes said um, Indian Island, Indian figures, um, and it's a kind of a giveaway for um, not paying too much attention to um, the actual novel and instead relying on other sources to find answers because the original title of, of the novel um, was Ten Little Indians and because of the the racist implications it went through a, a republication and became and then there were none and Indian was switched to soldier so um, it is Soldier Island. We are looking at um, soldier figurines, and and not um, not not Indians. So um, please pay attention to um, that distinction, and don't rely on um, outside sources other than uh, your your reading of of the the, the chapters. It's a great read, and um, I encourage you guys to keep reading and to keep. Um, doing your thing um, as we move through the novel. Um, it's going to get um, more fast paced. People are going to start dropping like flies and I am super excited to see what your observations for um, this week are. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know. I also um, really quickly wanted to say a, a couple of things. Um, I had a request from a student to create a discussion board um, where uh, you guys could post questions and um, I could answer them or you guys could talk to each other and answer the questions for each other. Um, and I have done so. There is now a little module saying uh, that's labeled talk to me and it's uh, where you can drop in and ask questions and, and, and things like that um, rather than sending me an email. But I always um, enjoy emails that you send to me. Um, the other thing that I do want to mention is your comparison contrast analysis uh, was due last night. And if you plan on turning it in, um, you are welcome to use your grace day. Uh, but otherwise, the the shell is going to close um, at midnight tonight. So get that done, get that in, and um, again, let me know if you have any questions or concerns, um, outrage, protests, or anything like that. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon.